The Golden State Warriors used to be losers and a perennial lottery team, but now they're a dynasty and the most stable franchise in the NBA. Here is their franchise history and how they turned rags into riches. The Warriors didn't always suck, but they have been quite unlucky as a franchise. Together with the Knicks and the Celtics, they are one of the three oldest teams in the NBA. Founded in Philadelphia in 1946, the Warriors participated in the inaugural season of pro basketball in America and eventually became the first champions. They won another championship in 1956, and then in 1959, they drafted Will Chamberlain, who was supposed to lead them to a decade of dominance. However, it was Bill Russell and the Celtics who dominated the 60s. The Warriors kept losing to Boston and before the 1962 season, they relocated to San Francisco. In 1965, they were forced to trade Chamberlain to the newly founded Philadelphia 76ers, but they immediately drafted another superstar, Rick Barry. Barry led them to the finals in 1967, which the Warriors lost to Chamberlain and the 76ers, and then they also lost Barry over a contract dispute. It seemed like the franchise was doomed, always losing in the biggest games and trading away superstars for a bag of chips. In 1971, the team moved to Oakland and became the Golden State Warriors. And the next year, Rick Barry returned. But their luck hadn't changed, and they kept losing in the playoffs. Then came 1975. Out of the blue, the Warriors had the best record in the conference, steamrolling through the playoffs on their way to their first NBA title since moving to California, and third overall. However, the happy days didn't last long. After Barry got older, the Warriors missed the playoffs for a decade. At the end of the 80s, with Don Nelson as the coach, the Warriors finally found success again. Tim Hardaway, Mitch Richmond and Chris Mullen formed Run TMC. They were the highest scoring trio in the NBA and played the most entertaining basketball in the world. But that iteration of the team danced for only two seasons. Despite having the number one overall pick from 1993 in Chris Webber or drafting Vince Carter and Gilbert Arenas, the Warriors always found a way to squander all of their assets and miss the playoffs for 12 straight seasons. In 2007, they had the We Believe team that pulled a surprise of the century by beating the first seeded Mavericks in the first round of the playoffs, but that was only a short-term success. Pretty soon, they started to suck again and returned to being a fun losing team from California, just slightly better than the awful LA Clippers. Then it finally happened. With the seventh pick in the 2009 NBA Draft, the Warriors drafted Stephen Curry. The turn of the decade was a big momentum shift for the Golden State Warriors. Steph dazzled with his three-point shooting and finished second in the Rookie of the Year voting. But maybe even more importantly, the entire team was sold to a new ownership group. In 2010, then, Joe Lacob and Peter Gruber bought the Warriors for $450 million, and a new era had begun. In April 2011, the Warriors hired Bob Myers as an assistant GM, and Mark Jackson became the new head coach. Clay Thompson was drafted with the 11th pick in the 2011 draft, but the team was still underperforming, mainly due to Steph's constant ankle problems. And then, a disaster. Golden State reached a deal to trade Curry to Milwaukee for Andrew Bogut. Thankfully for all the Warriors fans, the Bucks doctors stopped the trade because they feared Curry's ankles couldn't remain healthy. A fan favorite, Monte Ellis, got traded for Bogut instead of Steph. The fans were furious, but the Warriors got saved from making the worst mistake in franchise history. In the 2012 offseason, Bob Myers was promoted to be the general manager and immediately began pulling all the right moves. He drafted Harrison Barnes and Draymond Green, which resulted in a much improved defense and the first playoff berth in six years. Golden State defeated the Nuggets in the first round, after which they lost to a much deeper Spurs team in six games. For the 2014 season, the Warriors signed Andre Iguodala, who helped them finish in the top five in defensive rating and win 50 games in a season, something that seemed impossible just two years before. However, just when the fans hoped for a first deep playoff run in nearly 40 years, the Warriors lost in the first round to the Clippers. After that disappointment, and after Mark Jackson's bad relationships with nearly everybody in the front office, the Warriors fired Jackson and hired the new head coach, Steve Kerr, which was another terrific move by Bob Myers. Before the 2015 season, the Warriors also added a veteran point guard, Sean Livingston, to back up Stephen Curry, and the rest of the core team stayed intact. When David Lee got injured, it proved to be a blessing in disguise because Draymond Green got inserted into the starting lineup. With Dre as a small ball center, flanked by Iguodala, Steph, Clay, and Barnes, the Warriors became a monstrous team on both ends of the floor. With five guys that could dribble, pass, shoot, and switch everything on defense, the Warriors killed the league with pace and space. 
weeks. Steve Kerr's motion offense proved to be ideally suited for Stephen Clay's long-range shooting and the space it generated. Golden State finished the season first in pace, points, assists, and three-point percentage, while also having the best defensive rating in the NBA. The Warriors had the best record in the league, amassing 67 wins, the fifth best ranking ever, and by far the best in franchise history. Steph Curry won his first MVP, and Myers won the Executive of the Year award. However, nobody believed in them in the playoffs, thinking they were too small and inexperienced, and that three-point shooting teams could never win a championship. But then, the rodeo started. The Warriors swept the Pelicans, made a comeback against the Grizzlies, and defeated the Rockets in five to reach their first finals since 1975. Against the Cavs, they were an underdog. Even without Kyrie and Kevin Love, LeBron was still too good, and Della Vadova surprised everybody with his pesky defense. The Cavs took a 2-1 lead, and then Steve Kerr put Andre Iguodala in the starting lineup, which changed the momentum of the series. Golden State won the next three games and the title, with Iggy as the finals MVP. Next season, the Warriors kept the same team and reached unprecedented success. Steph Curry made 402 threes in a season, breaking his own record by 124 threes and becoming the first player to score over 300 and over 400 threes in a season. He also shot 50-40-90 for the year, becoming the seventh player in history to do so. And because he also led the league in scoring, with 30 points per game, Steph got named the first unanimous MVP in league history. The Warriors won 73 games in a season, breaking the all-time record that the Bulls set in 1996 with 72 wins. Everybody expected them to run over the competition in the playoffs, but it was harder than everyone expected. The Warriors were losing three games to one in the conference finals against KD, Westbrook, and the Thunder. But then Clay played like a madman in Game 6, and in Game 7, Steph pushed them to another NBA Finals against LeBron and the Cavs, even though he had Kyrie and Love available this time around. The Warriors were a well-oiled machine that crushed Cleveland in the first four games, leading 3-1. But the tables started to turn. Klay talked some trash and pissed off LeBron. Draymond got suspended, Bogut got injured, and Barnes kept missing open threes. The Cavs won Game 5 with 41 from both LeBron and Kyrie, and then Braun dropped 41 in Game 6 to push the series to 7. In the deciding game, the game was tied at 89, when Kyrie hit one of the coldest shots in NBA history. Steph couldn't get past Kevin Love, which proved that he wasn't 100% healthy in the finals, and the Cavs won their first NBA title and became the first team to win after a 3-1 deficit in the finals. However, that punch in the gut proved to be exactly what the Warriors needed. If they had won the title, sure, they would be considered the greatest team ever, but because they lost, they were able to acquire the second best player in the NBA in the offseason and become the most talented team in NBA history. With a dramatic increase in salary cap due to a new TV deal with ESPN and TNT, almost every team in the league had cap room. While some teams used it to splash big money on role players like Timofey Mozgov, the Warriors signed Kevin Durant while retaining all of their key contributors other than Bogut and Barnes. The 2017 Warriors had more firepower than any team in NBA history. They had five All-Stars, two league MVPs in their prime, a defensive player of the year, and Iggy as the finals MVP. The Warriors had the best offense and the second best defense in the NBA, and they ranked first in points, steals, blocks, assists, and field goal percentage. In the playoffs, they didn't lose a single game on the road to the finals. The only one who could even dream of defeating them was LeBron James and the Cavs. However, despite LeBron and Kyrie's brilliance, they still lost the first two games in the Oracle Arena. In Game 3, it seemed like the Cavs would prevail, but then KD showed why he was brought in. He nailed a 30-foot three to give the Warriors the lead, and Golden State won the game. Cleveland managed to win Game 4, but that's all they could do against the atomic shooting of KD, Steph, and Clay. The Warriors won the finals in five games and tied the best playoff record of all time. 2018 should have been just as great, but while the talent remained the same, the chemistry didn't, and the Warriors weren't as convincing in the regular season. In the playoffs, the Rockets came inches away from beating the Warriors, but thanks to a Chris Paul injury and 27 consecutive missed threes, they couldn't pull through, and Golden State reached another finals against LeBron. This time around, the Cavs weren't as talented and were a heavy underdog. Despite LeBron's 51 points in Game 1, J.R. Smith made one of the most famous mistakes in NBA history, and the Cavs lost the game. After that, the Warriors bulldozed Cleveland, swept the series, and won another NBA championship, with KD repeating as the finals MVP. 
2019 was another year of internal struggle for the Warriors, highlighted by the KD and Draymond on-court beef, after which Green was suspended by the team. The talent trumps everything, and the Warriors were simply too good not to reach the finals. However, injuries can make or break a championship run, and the Warriors' luck ran out. KD missed most of the playoffs, and when he came back in Game 5 of the finals against the Raptors, he tore his Achilles. In Game 6, Clay tore his ACL, and Steph just couldn't do it by himself. So the Raptors won the series and the title. Going into 2020, the Warriors had two of their best players out for the year, and KD chose to sign with the Brooklyn Nets, but out of respect, allowed the Warriors to do a sign-in trade with the Nets to get D'Angelo Russell in return. When the season started, Steph got injured in Game 5, and it was clear that the Warriors were going to have a losing season. Without Steph, Clay, and KD, Golden State went from the best offensive rating in 2019 to the worst one in 2020, which was the biggest drop-off in NBA history. But not all was bad. The team drafted Jordan Poole and traded D'Angelo Russell for Andrew Wiggins, and a first-round pick that would later turn into Jonathan Kaminga. In the 2020 draft, the Warriors had the second overall pick, which they used on center James Weissman. However, Clay suffered another hard injury, this time tearing his ACL in practice before the season, meaning he would miss yet another season. But the Warriors got Curry back, who was visibly bigger than ever before. Steph got buff, and extra muscle helped him to play good defense and lead the NBA in scoring. However, after Weissman got injured, the team didn't have enough talent and lost in the play-in tournament to miss the playoffs. I wouldn't want to see us next year, Steph said in his last press conference of the season. In the 2022 season, Clay came back, Wiggins and Gary Payton played some of the best perimeter defense in the league, and Poole emerged as the third splash brother. Smart offseason signings like Otto Porter, Nemanja Bialica, along with rookies Kaminga and Moody, gave Kerr enough flexibility and depth, and the Warriors became a contender once again. In the playoffs, they got past the MVP Jokic, the surging Grizzlies with John ja Morant, and then they smacked Luka and the Mavs to reach another NBA Finals. Against Boston and the best defensive team in the league, Steph Curry played the best basketball of his life, averaging 31, 6, and 5 on phenomenal shooting splits. The Celtics had no answer for Curry, who led the Warriors to a 4-2 series win and another title, winning the Finals MVP for the first time in his career. Steph is one of the most humble and hardworking superstars ever, and is the easiest player to build a team around along with being one of the GOATs. Clay is his perfect sidekick, and Draymond is the heart and soul of the team, and one of the best defenders in the history of the NBA. Bob Myers is a phenomenal GM, who drafted well and managed the salary cap like a veteran. Joe Lacob is the best owner in the NBA, and he pays a hefty sum in luxury tax that allowed Myers to keep the team together, which is not something a lot of owners will do. Steve Kerr deserves a lot of credit as well, and his way of fun and humble leadership is the perfect combination for his team. Assistant coaches like Mike Brown and Kenny Atkinson deserve to be mentioned, and so do KD, Iguodala, Bogut, and many others. It takes a great organization from top to bottom to win in the NBA. You need to have a great owner, a smart GM, and a flexible coach. You need a generational talent surrounded by great role players. The Warriors have all that, and that's why they transformed from losers to a dynasty.